turn with me please to Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon. Chapter 1. Song of Solomon, chapter 1. Simple thought, nothing new. Again, uh, kind of just going to, I don't know why I'm doing this. I, this is not what I plan to do. It's just the way it's been working out. I've got a challenge for you this week. Don't plan on being long tonight. I give you a lot of stuff in Sunday school and something to think about doing preaching, but now I want to challenge you. This, this here, Sunday night crowd, that's, this is the core of our church. This is the, the backbone. This is the families that make up the church, the faithful, the workers. This is the group right here, your Sunday night and your Wednesday night crowd. And I thank y'all. We, we got, statistically speaking, we've got good percentages that come back on Sunday night and our Wednesday night's good percentages compared to a lot of churches. Uh, when you look at the percentages, the Lord's blessed us and we've got a good group here. But I do want to challenge you with something tonight. I want to help you. I want God's blessings on my life. Just like I know you do. I want God's blessings on my home. Just like I know you do. And, and the thought that I've got for you tonight, I, I, I was planning on reading more, but we're just going to read one verse for time's sake. Look at verse 6. In verse 6 it says, Look not upon me because I'm black, because the sun hath looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me, and they made me the keeper of the vineyards. But my own vineyard have I not kept. Here in this passage, of course, we know it's a love story between a Shulamite girl and her beloved shepherd boyfriend. We know what Song of Solomon's about. But what I wanted to focus on was that one verse. She said, don't look upon me, I'm black. For being in the sun, my skin's dark. It, 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 it's, it's aged me. She's been in the sun and she's worked so hard. But why? Because her, her family has made her, they're angry with her, and they've made her keep others' vineyards while her own went unkept. And the challenge, the thought tonight, was how's your vineyard? Are you worried about other people's vineyards so much? That your vineyard goes neglected. Some people look at other people's families so much. And they look to other families and they want their families to be like those families. And they look to other families and they think, oh, that my family could be like that. If my husband was like that or if my wife was like that or if I had children with that, that good or that behaved or, or uh, if only. But listen, what you haven't seen is the work the prayer that went into that vineyard. Right. Amen. You're looking at a well-kept vineyard, not realizing your own vineyard could be just as nice, yeah. just as beautiful, if you put the same effort into it. How's your vineyard? How's your vineyard? Now, I, 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 I thought about that and and, and you know what they say, the, the old saying is, you know, never buy a mechanic's car. He's so busy working on everyone else's car, he is sick of working on cars, so he just lets his go. He'll keep riding around and then be rattling, tires getting ready to fall off, wheels getting ready to rattle and all that stuff. Now that's not true. I'd like to think I was better than that because my wife drove mine. I took care of mine. My kids was going to be in mine. I took care of mine. Anybody that got one of my cars got a good car. Well, truth be told, we still got them all. Amen. <laughs> we, we hang on to them until they dead. When they're done, there's nothing left of them when we get done. I'm still driving a 91 F-150. Amen. Amen. That, now that's old now. That's older than some of the kids in here. Amen. <laughs> How many of you were born after that? Raise your hand. Look at that. Boy, my goodness, there's quite a few in here that like that. Yeah, my truck's older than y'all. <laughs> I'm getting old. Amen. When you say my truck's older. Hey, but listen, I'd jump in, take off. Amen. It'd be all right. I like it. They say never, never buy a carpenter's house. He is so busy 
working on other people's houses and making other people's houses pretty and taking care of other people's houses. He's sick of working on houses, so he comes home and he lets his go unrepaired. They say that a, a hairdresser, she's so busy working and, and fixing everybody's hair, when she gets up a point, she's so sick of hair, she just puts hers up in a hat on it or whatever, you know, just puts it up in a bun and keeps going. Why? Because they get sick of it. You know, the, the, the thing that I wanted to point out is sometimes we get so busy helping others with their vineyard that we let ours slide. Sometimes we get so it, so, so, uh, it, it, I don't know how to say it. We get so busy helping others tend their vineyard that we neglect our own. Don't allow the world, the devil, to distract you from your own vineyard. The challenge is to look at the importance of your own vineyard. God gave you a family. God gave you a home. God gave you a wife, a husband. God gave you children. Are you keeping your vineyard? You know, when you've got a vineyard, there's some things that you're going to do. If you love that vineyard, and you really believe that vineyard was a gift from God, you would do everything you could for that vineyard. Man, you'd get in there, and you would plow, you would get that dirt ready, you would prepare, you would plow. Sometimes it takes some plowing to have a good vineyard. It takes some preaching and some setting some things straight. It ain't always fun and games. Sometimes it's hard work, amen. Sometimes it takes some plowing, and you would prepare the soil, and you would put everything in there that it needed. Water, the fertilizer, you'd, you'd want the best seed, and you'd do everything you can. Then after a while, it'd be time that you planted some stuff. You'd pick the best seed, wouldn't you? You wouldn't just let anything go in there. You wouldn't just go, like, like there's this one place. I, I, every time I go and get seed from this one, thing, one place to, to reset the yard, I get more oats than I get grass. How I many have you ever been there? I, I think they swapped it out or something on me. I said, my goodness, this is terrible seed. I keep telling myself I ain't never getting seed there again. But it's the cheapest place, so I wind up going there. You get what you... Put into it, amen. Yep. If you don't put good seed in, you're not going to get good seed out. Right. If you don't put any effort in, you can't expect a whole lot out, amen. Right. If you just let it grow on its own, it'll go wild. It'll grow thorns and thistles. It'll grow things in it that you don't want in there. And then you'll find yourself having to pluck up that stuff. You have to go in there and weed it. And it takes more work. And when you weed and stuff, sometimes you pull up the good plant. Sometimes, if you let stuff go too long, and you go in there trying to correct the problem, you wind up pulling up some of the little seedlings. Sometimes you hurt them. You let them have stuff so long, and you let it go so long, that before you correct it, that it takes good root and it gets entangled. So when you go in there trying to remove the rock and roll, or remove the drinking, or remove that sin, or get rid of that that's causing the problems, you've let it get so involved and so wrapped up that it'll hurt the family. It'll hurt the little saplings. Are you with me? Sometimes, sometimes we don't just plow and prepare and plant. Sometimes we have to prune. Sometimes it's just the little things. I remember growing up, we used to, we used to prime tobacco. There was some tobacco fields, and I used to work in the tobacco fields when I was just a young man. And, and we, we'd go out there, and they called it sucker. And basically, you're pruning it. Some little things would grow in there, and you'd just go and you'd, you'd, you'd take it, you'd, you'd knock them off, you'd take them things, little growths that you didn't want, you'd knock them out, and you'd break the top off to keep the plant so the leaves would grow. And we'd go do that. Sometimes, you would have to spray for insects. You want to protect, <coughs> protect your vineyard. Protect it. You, you do everything you can to protect it. A lot of farmers pray for the right weather. A lot of prayer goes in good vineyard, good farm, you know what I'm saying? But I remember they used to have these things called, uh, we call them backer worms. Tobacco worms. They was, they was big old fat, yellow, greenish worms. And they were squishy time. Soft and squishy. 
and you could pick them up and they'd wiggle in your fingers. I mean, they'd be just wiggling and everything. And, and what made it fun, now, I was just, I was 11, 12 years old, something like that, when I was working in that. We'd get them things, and I'd pop up, and my head was just barely as tall as some of the plants, and I would look for my buddy. And he'd usually be a row over, and I would take that little thing, and I'd go, boom! Just hit him right in the back of the head. You say, how nasty! Yeah, it was! And <laughs> were you lying? Oh, we'd have us a time. We was dodging worms all day. You know, we made work fun. We enjoyed ourselves. You know, you, just because, just because it takes a lot of work don't mean that we can't enjoy it. You can have fun on the farm, amen? You can have fun keeping the vineyard together and making it nice and everything. You can enjoy it. Now, I... I I, I don't want to go long. I just want to give you a few thoughts, but realize the importance of your own vineyard. Don't get so caught up in the beauty of others' vineyards that you lose the blessing of the vineyard you've been given. Realize the importance of it and take interest in your own vineyard. Spend some time in it. Put some investment in it. Invest your time in it. Uh, and, and invest your heart in it. If you don't put your heart in it, they'll know. Amen. I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Some people care more for their dogs than they do their kids. When their dog goes in heat, you know what they'll do? They'll pin that dog up and they'll almost set guard over that dog. No strays getting to my dog. My dog is a purebred. I ain't getting letting just any old mutt come in and get a hold of my dog. But when they're a teenager, about 14, 15, 16 years old, full, raging full of hormones, gets a little difficult to deal with, they'll let them run free. Oh my. Say, oh preacher, that's hard, that's hard. Yes, I know it's hard, but listen. A, a, a dog in heat wants out, but you don't let it out. Amen? It's kind of quiet in here. Amen? 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 Amen. Amen. You're going to fall worm at me or what? I mean, I, I, do I need to hide? Does somebody find something? Listen, that's when we need to watch them. That's when they need us the most. Amen? That's when they ain't thinking straight. And I know every teenager in here is mad as a dog at me for saying something like that. But listen, I was a teenager too. Right. And you ain't thinking straight. And if you don't make the right decisions at that age, you can ruin your life in just one bad decision. One bad date. One bad night. One bad choice could ruin everything. Everything. So trust mom and dad, especially, especially if you see they're invested in their vineyard. If they're trying to raise you in a beautiful vineyard, one that's full of the best vine, King James Bible, good preaching. If they're trying to invest time in you in prayer and spend time with you reading the Bible and praying with you each night at the family altar, if they're trying to raise, don't be like 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 my tomato plants. I can plant them things, and before they get ripe and produce the fruit that they should produce. They turn black and rot on me. You can put them in the good soil. You can put them in good sun. You can water them. You can fertilize them. You can do everything right. But for some reason, them things will rot before they'll rot. Now, somebody's told me how to fix that now and everything. Uh, but you know what I'm talking about. Kids, God's put you in your vineyard. The challenge for you is just think. Examine your vineyard. Are you rebelling against the one that has control of the vineyard? Are you rebelling and, 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 and are, are you refusing to listen? Are you rottening rather than rightening? Mm. Mom, how's your vineyard? You spend more time worried about other people's vineyards than you do your own? How's your husband and your kids doing? 
What's, what, what, what's their needs? Are they being met? Dad, are you spending more time in somebody else's vineyard and worried about them? You know, preachers have to be careful of this. They can get so invested sometimes in the lives and in the situations of their congregation. They can get so pulled into the different situations that they're in so many different vineyards. Their own falls apart and they don't even see it until it's too late. You say, well, preacher, there's always some Pharisees say, well, the church comes before the family. No, it don't. No, it don't. God's divine order is God comes first, yes. Then the wife, then the children, and if you're a woman, then the husband, then the children, then the church. He ordained the family before he did the church. Amen, amen, amen. Goes over like a lead balloon in today's society, but it's still the truth. Now, here's the challenge. Recognize the importance of your own vineyard. Show some interest in your vineyard. And here's a challenge. Go home this week and inspect your vineyard. Think about it. I'm challenging you not just to hear the preaching that we need to take interest and realize how important our vineyards are, but we need to go home and inspect our vineyards. Inspect your vineyard. Is there a need that's been neglected for a while now? Is there, is there insects invaded and eaten away at your vineyard that needs to be pushed out? Is there a little foxes that's got in and trying to spoil the vines? Are there wild grapes growing? You know, wild grapes get in? They ain't good. They, uh, anybody owns a vineyard tell you, you've got to get rid of them. See, they like them, that special kind, because they, they, control, they control when they come in and all that stuff. The flavors and everything's important to them. And them wild ones, they'll come in and be sour. And they'll, not be, they'll be tart and bitter. They're not, they're not producing what they want them to produce. How's your vineyard? How's your vineyard? I'm going to ask you, baby, you can close your house.